Morning, morning, morning. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Love 500 and welcome back to Project Ernie. This afternoon we are going to be doing the clutch slave cylinder and bleeding the clutch. That will be in the previous video. So you would have already seen, see that? You would have already seen that. Um, but I've jumped ahead, a bit of time travel because I'm going to service it now and then try and get everything else is done. I did think, I was driving to work yesterday and I thought, what have I got to do? I've got to service it, I've got to clean it. That's about it, isn't it, apart from that clutch? And I thought, ah, springs and shocks. I bought new springs, I don't think it needs it. I'm going to take the old ones off, clean them up, possibly paint them. I am going to change the shocks. So once we've serviced it, we'll get those shocks done as well, we'll get the springs off, we'll film all that, get it all on video. Let's go, let's do it. temporary battery in there so um, yeah when you've seen this the clutch will be hopefully done um, but at the moment oh, we've got to polish up those headlights as well that will that'll come we'll do that later on um, the mechanics first so we've done the air filter the air box is back on we've got to drop the oil so I'm gonna get it up on stands warm up the engine uh, then I'll drink my tea and then we'll um, we'll get that oil dropped change the oil and filter uh, and then we'll turn the car around and uh, get it up on ramps at the back, not on ramps, sorry, get it up on axle stands at the back and get those shocks done. So with no further ado, let's get it up on ramps. Right, that is the oil change done, oil and filter. I had real trouble getting that filter off. Um, I actually paused the camera to start with um, because it was just, I just couldn't get it off. Um, it, I did eventually, I just couldn't get the jaws of the, um, the remover, the filter remover to, uh, to grip onto it. It was done up so tight and it looked like it had been done up with grips quite tightly as well, rather than, I know you're meant to do them like hand tight. I always go like about another half a turn after hand tight but that it had the indentations in the actual body of the, the filter where it, someone had obviously put it on using the uh, removers as well so that was a bit of a pain but it came off eventually um, so yeah we, we all filled up with oil just running it up to temperature then we'll get it down I just want to check make sure there's no leaks um, and then we'll get it down off the stands um, turn it off check the level again in a few minutes um, and top up if necessary and then We'll turn it round uh, and we'll, we'll get on and do the um, shocks. Right, okay, so oil, oil change is done. Um, as you can see, the car is down the drive the other way. Um, we have it uh, in gear. Front wheels are chocked. Um, handbrake is on, although of course the handbrake isn't active because both wheels are off. Uh, we actually have quite a strange tread pattern. I don't know if they're winter tyres or something. I haven't had a good look because they're a bit dirty, so I will clean them, but um, uh, they're Michelin tyres. I'm not sure what, what Michelin tyres, but very odd. Never seen uh, almost like a bloody tractor tyres. Um, so let me, just, let me just grab a torch and we'll just have a look at these shocks properly because we've only really looked at them from underneath before. Okay, so I say there is no noise from these shocks whatsoever, but they have come up at least on one adv as advisory once. I'm not sure if it was more than that. I can't remember off the top of my head, but... They could potentially, I'm not sure they are the original shocks because they haven't, the, the original shocks have like a rubber, 
boot around this bit and they, these haven't so they're probably replacement ones but they look like they've been on it for some time um the bushes all look okay i can't remember was it a bit of oil or something i can't remember i mean these these have been on the um advisories for some time it says in the saying they're corroded look if i rub the uh, the um dirt off unless they've actually been replaced because they look like they're new bearing in mind this was only done last month so i don't even think i need to take them off you know what look i mean look at that down there look that they're new aren't they so they've clearly been done these the shocks haven't but those um springs have definitely been mentioned before and i say i have bought some but i'm i'm not i'm just gonna clean those up this is a bit crusty as well so i'm gonna give this a clean as they always are on these cars um yeah i'm not i'm not even gonna take those springs out i'm just gonna give them a good wipe over basically <laughs> they're just dirty so i think they have been they have been changed recently by the looks of it although they came up on the mot which was um a month before i got this car less than a month before i got it so that's a bit odd because they wouldn't have got dirty like that in a month would they i suppose it depends on the mileage Mm, strange anyway i am going to set you up and we are going to do the shock absorbers uh, at least then we can say springs are not springs have been replaced but not by me they've been cleaned up and the shock absorbers were an advisory so no expense spared they weren't making a noise but because they're an advisory i've changed them <laughs> and it's now started to spit with rain wonderful right let's um let's get on Okay, so we've all um, WD 40 it up, both sides. And, oh God, this rain's getting harder. Um, 15 millimetres that side, and the bottom one is uh, 19 millimetres. So, always try and buzz it off with a gun first. Um, don't think I've ever had one that wouldn't come off with a gun, and the, ba the battery is fully charged, so fingers crossed. Here we go. Yep, that's come off nice. Well, what we'll do once, whilst we've got this off as well, actually I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna support the rear beam with the uh, trolley jack as well, I think, because that way you can move it up and down as well. Um, but while, it, while it's down a little bit, I will let it make it easier for me to clean. I'm not gonna take the springs out to clean. I'm just gonna, um, just gonna do it in situ. Cause literally a rag and some probably some elbow grease would be sufficient or some brake cleaner something like that one or the other or both um so yeah let's just get it jacked up at the back a little bit i normally do this i forgot actually just to support it in the, in the middle that's all because when you, if you did both sides at the same time the rear beam would drop down we don't really want it to do that. If you're doing the springs, yeah, but if you're not, you don't need to. Right, that's that. And then we need to get underneath now and uh, do the other side. And I think probably the jack's going to get in the way now. So let me, just, let me just move that to one side a little bit. Move it over here. That'll be better. Ow, I'm hitting myself with the jack now. I so say we're not lifting it up. It's just supporting it. Right, let's get underneath on the other bolt. Can't remember, sometimes I think you might need to get the extension on this. Can't remember, let me try it. Yeah, because the actual, the gun gets in the way. So if you had a smaller gun, it would be all right. Because some of them are like a lower profile. But it, uh, it sort of gets in the way. So you just have to put it on the extension bar. Can't get it on now. That's it. Right. Hopefully this will do the same. Buzz off. Okay. Here we go. A lot of rust coming off. Are we going the right way. Haven't moved it, have we? No, that is right. Yeah. No, it doesn't want to come off. No, I think we're going to have to use the um, impact, not impact, sorry, that is the impact. We're going to have to use the um, 
pry bar, I think, just to get it started. Let me just go grab that. Typical, isn't it? Me saying that I've never had to do this before. It's always come off. I think, I think it's always come off. It's just a matter of breaking that seal, isn't it? That's all it is. Oh, blimey. Uh, so we're going that way, aren't we? Yeah. All right. Bit of brute force. Fingers crossed this works. Oh, hang on. Get it on the right way. There we go. Cool, blind me. Oh, come on, stupid thing. Can't get this on. Doesn't help that I'm getting wet. That's too. There we go. Cool, blind me. There we go, that's it. Very, very tight. Very tight. Give it a bit more. Oh, it keeps going on. Same way, you've got sort of restricted room working here. That doesn't help. Now the trolley jack's in the way. I'm getting bloody wet. Oh, come on, stupid bloody thing. No, I think that'll do with the gun now. It's enough. All right, let's try that again. So once you've broken the seal, that's sufficient. There you go. There we go. Very tight. Right, let's take that one out and we'll have a look at it. Right, it's just, that will just lift out now. He says, there you go. So, what make are these? These are... In oh, my phone's ringing. Let's see who that is. Well, my camera's getting wet now. Right, that was, uh, funnily enough, that was um, a fella called Dean from uh, Tunbridge Wells. I um, uh, can't remember which car it was. Uh, he said to me, you bought a part off me once. And I racked my brains and then I thought, I said to him, was it a headlining? Um, I think it was the stripped car, the facelift stripped car that I did a um, couple of years ago. And it was him, uh, and he, uh, he's just got a car and he's got no locking wheel nuts, so he was asking me if he, I, he had one I could borrow. So he's going to send me over a WhatsApp picture. I've, I've got four. Obviously, there were so many different connotations of it, or variations of it, I should say. Um, he's going to send me a picture over the pattern. But I've sort of pointed him towards eBay, where I normally get them from. Uh, but yeah, as we were saying, so I think, I think it said, like, fluid. And I, mean, I can't see any fluid on this at all. I mean, it's a bit wet now. Um, but yeah, I can't see any fluid. And the actual, the bushes themselves, sorry, you're not even seeing it. Bushes themselves, there's nothing wrong with them at all. So you know what? <laughs> I'm even wondering whether if they've replaced those springs, whether they replace these as well. I wonder. With maybe second hand ones, because they're not new. They're certainly not new, but I don't see anything wrong with them. So I could be changing these unnecessarily. So I am gonna keep these. I'm not gonna throw them away actually. Because, yeah, I've got a feeling they've been done, you know, but with second-hand ones, which is probably what's happened with the springs as well. They were probably second-hand springs. Mm. But I'm still doing them anyway, but never mind. Anyway, I'm going to take the camera out of the way now because it is raining uh, and my camera is getting absolutely soaking wet. Right, I didn't film any more of that because uh, the rain it is actually stopped again now, but it's in the air. Um, so what I've done, uh, I've done both shocks. So this shock as well, dirty, greasy, but it's not leaking. So I really think that these have been changed. There's nothing wrong with them. So I'm gonna just clean them up and keep them. Um, and probably use them again. So, I, so the spring, what I've done with the springs, let me get another torch, because the battery's run out of that torch. Bear with me a sec. Right, look at the, uh, look at the springs now. I've cleaned those up with brake cleaner. They look almost brand new. So without a doubt, they've been changed. Without a doubt. Um, and there you can see my nice new shocks. Uh, I've, I've still got to give that a bit of a, um, what do you call it, a wire brush. But what I've done under here, if I can take you underneath, let me just uh, get you underneath. Right, we're laying down on the horrible wet. So I've wire brushed the cups 
and uh, wire brushed the inside as best I can and the outside. Uh, and I've just put a coat, both sides, I've put a couple of coats of, um, what do you call it, a stone chip, black stone chip, just to help to protect it. Um, I, I haven't talked the bolts up yet, I'll talk the bolts up once I've got it down on the ground. Um, but yeah, all done. Didn't take long at all. But I just think that will help to protect it now because they do get crusty and eventually, you know, it's a 10, uh, what is it, 11 plate this, isn't it? So it's a few years old. This is clearly the original. Um, so at some point that will rust through. So anything I can do to, you know, give it a bit more longevity, the better. Um, so that's that part of it done now. Um, as I say, all I've got to do, let me just put you down for a second while I, I get up, I'm getting too old for this, um, is just give this a bit of a D. D scale I was going to say give it a bit of a brush with a wire brush just clean it up a bit put the wheel back on um, I'm not going to put the trims back on for now because I'm going to give those a good clean back and front uh, but this is all done all cleaned up all nice wheel can go back on and then service is done um, and I know at the point you're seeing this the clutch would have been hopefully sorted out but I've still got to do that but that will be later on this afternoon which as I say you would have already seen on the previous video um, and then all we got to do then is do a final, I think, unless I've missed something, I don't think I have, is do a final, final clean on the outside, oh sorry, on the final clean on the inside just to get it up to spec, and then um, we got to put that new stereo in, you know, the media player thing, and then I think that will be done, apart from the clean up on the outside, and it'll be ready to go. So, you know, I wanted to get this done by hopefully by the weekend, I think it will. Right, one thing I remembered as well that I needed to do, uh, I needed a new tire on here. It, again, that was an advisory on the MOT from January that it uh, tire was worn on the inside, which as you can see, there's barely any tread there. Now the reason for that, I believe, is something else that I've just remembered that I'd forgotten about. Um, which I pointed out in the first video in the walk around this is the tracking needs done so the tracking's clearly out Doesn't, you wouldn't know it to drive it but the steering wheel was at sort of just before one o'clock I think so I need to take that down might see if I can take it down today um, see if I can get that uh, tracking done today if not I'll leave it till tomorrow um, I think I might concentrate on getting it clean today and then, so if we get it literally completely finished today, um, apart from the tracking, and then we can get that done tomorrow and then that'll be it, job done. Uh, so I think what we're gonna do now, um, now I've changed that wheel, I am going to, I think clean it, clean it on the outside, I think. Clean it on the outside, change the number plates, um, and then I'll, I'll change my clothes because I've got my dirty clothes on. So I'll change my clothes to clean the inside because I don't want to get the seats all dirty. Um, and then we'll install that stereo as well. Um, we'll show you that because we haven't seen that one before. It's another car puride one. I think I showed it to you before. Uh, or maybe I didn't actually. Um, but it's one that's it's, it's not quite so deep, but it's wider. So um, it might be better. The other one was good, but there were some comments about it, how it blocked the windscreen, which it didn't unless you were extremely short. But I thought I'd give it a go and buy this one. It was 98 quid with my with my $50 discount. Um, I've had it a few weeks now. It came quite a while ago. Um, so I ordered it when, basically when I bought the car. Um, so I need to get that installed and I'll do that probably in exactly the same way I did it in the other one. So I will obviously take the stereo out of here temporarily uh, to get the, the vents out. And then I'll feed that um, cable down. I'll probably have to take the tray out at the bottom as well just to feed the cable down. And then we can plug it in to the cigarette lighter down here, like we did before, hide all the wires up, and that'll be that done. Uh, and then we just need to go over the plastics. All the seats, as you know, are all clean and lovely. Just, the carpets are all nice and clean. It's just the plastics that need a good wipe over. Steering wheel needs clean and that sort of stuff. Uh, around the door shuts and all that, but obviously I'll do that when I do the ex exterior. Uh, and then we'll be done, I think. Um, yeah, so uh, this is looking good, apart from the clutch, again, which you've already seen, so hopefully, we are, we are sorted with that. Um, we don't have a buyer for this one, strangely. Only because no one knows I've got it. 
Um, you know, none of my normal customers know that I've got it. Uh, and no one's, although I've still got that list, it's quite an old list. So I've really been going with the people that call me and so, or message me and say, have you got any cars at the moment? And I say, yeah, I've got this. Um, I had a message yesterday for a lounge. Someone wants a lounge and they've got three and a half grand. And I said, I haven't got a lounge at the moment. I'm afraid all I've got is a pop. Um, that was by email, so I haven't checked my email since whether they might be interested in that. Didn't tell them how much, um, but I have made a decision on price on this one. Uh, so thanks to you for, you know, I did ask you on that previous uh, video about um, what you think I should charge. And I, I had like 2250 in my head. Um, and a lot of you said 24. A couple of people said two and a half. A couple of people said more, I think. Um, so I've decided to sell it for two and a half, or at least I might knock down a little bit, but that's going to be my asking price. Either 2450 or 2950, uh, sorry, 2450, 2495, two and a half grand. Um, yeah, probably 2450 we'll go for. I like, I like the 50 pound ones. I don't know why, it makes no odds, but um, I think it's worth that, especially with that funky stereo once it's in. Um, if someone offers me 2,200, I'll tell them where, where to go. But um, yeah, I think it's worth every penny. Set of service, new shocks, new springs. It's got a re very recent exhaust on it. The cam belt has been done. I've looked, I did, I can't remember if I mentioned that earlier, but I did look underneath and um, a couple of times, you know, turned the engine over, looked underneath. It's, it's in good condition. Uh, it's not the original, I don't think. Um, so it has been done at some point. I don't, can't evidence when at the moment but i haven't chased the service history up yet obviously we know we've got some service history on it i need to try and trace chase up some more of it but we'll do that um probably later today or tomorrow um yeah two and a half grand that's what i'm gonna ask for it so i'll probably put it on the mum's group i expect it'll be a great little first car no it's not got aircon it's a pop it's not a color therapy it's not a lounge it's not got the glass roof and so on but it's a nice little car and it's going to be a cheap one so I will be back later once I've got it clean. We'll, go, we'll do this uh, stereo um, and then that'll be it, I think, I hope. Right, it is washed to within an inch of its life. So it had a citrus pre-wash. It then had a snow foam. It then had uh, a Meguiar's bucket and sponge wash. Uh, it then, I've gone over it with um, tar remover on the, the seals. There was some road tar on there um, I've then gone over those bits of it with some was with some wax um, I've then uh, put easy coat on it so it's had a really good it hasn't had a proper wax but it's had a wax where I've obviously taken the wax off with the uh, existing wax off with the uh, tar remover um, and yeah and then an easy coat uh, and then a dry it again so it's had like three four dries it's just stopped raining strangely enough. Um, so I remembered there's actually a couple of other things I need to do as well, of course. Um, change the number plates. Uh, I've also got those little chips on the windscreen, oh, on the windscreen, on the uh, bonnet that I need to um, touch in. And I've also got to polish up, I think I might have mentioned that, got to polish up the headlights. Um, yeah, apart from that, it's just then taking it for the tracking. Uh, as I say, I'll do that tomorrow. Um, yeah, so it's coming along nicely. So I think I might actually do the headlights now. Right, it's time to get the new stereo fitted. So as I mentioned before, this one is um, a different one. Still, my, still made by Carper Ride. And I, this one's not a freebie. I bought this one with my own hard earned cash. So, as I said to you before, much smaller, longer, and not so high. So I think that's less obtrusive. And really also, it would be nice, and I don't, maybe you can, if you could, if it was sort of out here, you could adjust it so it would actually come down there a little bit. That would be quite good. And then, you know, if you want hot air coming out of there or cold air, you could sort of just push it up out of the way. I don't know if it allows for that sort of adjustment. We'll see. Again, it comes with a, a dash mount and a windscreen mount. Um, my preferred is definitely the dash mount. Comes with a sticky pad again. So this is different. So we're not going to stick it for the time being, we're just going to put it in position. So we'll put that there. And I know you can't see this because I'm doing it off camera a little bit, but 
lovely looking looking little screen. We'll just get the uh, the usual thing. Now we've got to take this out again, so we're going to have to take take this take that off, take that off, take that out, take that out, and feed it in from behind. It's the only way to do it, really, which is a bit of a pain, but it still it, it makes it more of a. Oh, I've got the wrong thing out. That's the windscreen mount. I thought I was getting the cable out. Or wrong bag. There it is. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, it, it just makes it a bit more of a, a neater installation, doesn't it? And a less sort of temporary installation, if you like. But it looked good on the last one. Um, the only, my only qualms with this was if you plugged in a camera to it, whether it be a dash cam or a reverse it camera, it just means more wires, doesn't it? That's the only thing about that. So I am just going to plug it in for the minute. So again, this has got full size USB, uh, which you could plug a camera into. It's got the power cable. It's got a SD card slot, micro SD card slot, auxiliary, AV in. Yeah, it's got a light sensor on the back. Not no no built-in dash cam on this one. They are more expensive. So if it was my own car, I'd probably get one with a built-in dash cam, but uh, not on this one. So let me just plug this in. Plug the power in, and then we will mount it onto here. Oh, oh, that's the um, sticky pad. So I say it just it pushes on, and then you can just slide it off. It's quite easy to slide off. You know, if you were parking somewhere and you didn't want to leave it on the screen. Nope, and that does move up and down actually, yeah. So that does, let me just put that in properly. I think we're supposed to tighten that up. Yeah, that has got a little wheel on it there where you can tighten it up. Now, does it move up and down? No, it doesn't move up and down, unfortunately. It's a fixed. Oh, <laughs> I've done it up crooked now. Let me loosen it off again, okay. So it goes, it, it moves sort of left and right a little bit. So you push it in push it up and then tighten the wheel so you can oh, I've done it again you can tighten it I do it manually there you go you can you can ooh, tilt it to your desired position it's going to pull it a little bit there but we'll plug it in <laughs> it's not stuck is it so right what I'm going to do is I am going to grab the camera off of the tripod and then we'll switch the ignition on um, and we'll have a look, see what it looks like. I like it though. It look, it, it, it's, I think it's in a way, it's, uh, I just can't get it to stay still. It's a little bit more subtle than the other one, I think. The other one was a little bit in your face. This one's not, not as big. Oh God. <laughs> it definitely needs sticking down, which of course we will do, but I don't want to do it just yet. <laughs> it's getting on my nerves now. It won't stay. There, right, stay. Okay, I'm just gonna grab the camera and we'll do it. Here we go, so it's plugged into the cigarette lighter. Uh, we assume the cigarette lighter works, of course. I haven't actually tested it, <laughs> which is a bit silly considering I had to send the console out. Um, hopefully it does, um, otherwise we're in trouble. Right, ignition on. Yes, power. <laughs> Carp arrived. Now you can have these, you can, um, have your own oh I like the split screen oh I like that I do like that so I don't think you could have split screen in that other one you can in this I'd prefer it the other way around because this is more designed for left hand drive isn't it but it's exactly the same it's exactly the same as the other one but it takes up less space so you've got your Android Auto and your Apple AirPlay so we'll set that up again it literally takes five minutes to set it up as you know, you tune it into the stereo. If you want to see the video on the other one that I installed in the color therapy, um, then uh, click on the link above and um, that will take you to it. Uh, and I'll also link it at the end of this video. I will also put the link to it in, um, in the description of this video. Um, I'm just having a look to see if the actual the time is correct. I haven't got me clock on, clock on me. No, no, it's not quarter past 11, is it? Um, oh, hang on, Tw yeah, 23.12, so yeah, well, obviously I guess once that's connected to your phone, which of course it isn't at the moment, I imagine that will pick up the time from your phone. So I like that, I think that's really nice. So as I say, it's going to work exactly the same as the other one, it just takes up less space. 
I like that. And it was cheaper, this one as well. This was with my with my $50 discount at Carperide. Uh, you have to follow my link. Uh, I will put my link again on, on the description if you want to get yourself one of these. Follow my link. Uh, and then you can enter my code, which is LOVE500 in capitals. I don't know if it matters whether it's case sensitive or not, but um, it's LOVE500 in capital letters. or well, the word LOVE is in capital letters, I should say. Um, that will give you $50 off. Uh, and I used that myself. Um, so, it, of course, it, it reduced the price of it to £98. Came within about a week and a half. I really like it. I think it's nice. So I will be mounting it here, like I did the last one, with the sticky pad. Um, whether that's going to be the best way or not, see, if you stuck it to the windscreen, it's either got to be back there, which is a little bit further, and, of course, you've got to stretch to reach it. Um, but I would suggest with something like this, when you... Uh, parking up in a car park somewhere on the side of the road somewhere it might be you might be wise to unplug it because you don't want someone smashing your window and stealing it do you that's the only problem with these of course um the light fingered brigade um so yeah i will get this all wired in as i say exactly as i did before so i'll take this off take that off pull the stereo out undo this pull that out um, feed the cable through and then the cable will then drop down there and I'll take that out or I'll just drop that down a little bit so I can get to the wire tuck all the wire underneath and then plug it in where it is plugged in already I like it yeah I'll show you it once it's all done okay all back together didn't take very long so it's all stuck onto the uh, dash it's one of those sort of, rather than just a sticky pad like the other one, this is sort of a, you know the stuff that you stick them onto the windscreen with, it's like a really sticky sort of gel almost. Bizarre stuff. It's one of those. Um, which, if you remember, when I, 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 I stuck it originally in the R bath, the other one, when I did the, uh, um, the, the uh, review video, and I, I couldn't get the damn thing off. It took ages to get it off. Um... But I think that's much neater with the cable going through there. It doesn't affect the operation of these. I did actually find out that the uh, fins in there weren't moving sideways, so that was going to all have to come out anyway. Um, just to uh, see, it does it, it. It sort of sort of gets in the way a little bit, but it doesn't stop it from. It doesn't stop the direction, so it does actually work still. Uh, right, let's fire it up. Is it plugged in? Yep. We haven't obviously connected to connected there, connected it to the phone yet. Well, it's the next day. Um, I, I come to the conclusion, and I've forgotten that I haven't actually done any diagnostics on this car. Um, so we're just going into the body computer, uh, battery sensor, and the mini crypt. They're they're old errors which are in blue, so they're intermittent. So we'll get rid of those. We we'll just clear those. Uh, the reason I'm doing this um, is because uh, I seem to have the um, rough idle come back again. Um, I have ordered a coil pack. I do have one, but I've got a bit of a sticker on it saying possibly faulty, or words to that effect. Um, so I'm going to try it. But I just wanted to, I'm, gonna, I'm just going through all the um, ECUs. I'm going to, or relevant ones. Hasn't got blue and me, so we don't need to connect to that. Um, I'll just to see if there's any other faults, and then I'll connect to the engine one. And... Uh, see if anything comes up on there i don't think it will because they often don't when you, with those type of um engine faults no fault code on there uh what else do we need to connect to um nothing really on there instrument panel no so i'm just going to swap take the yellow lead off and plug in and we'll start the engine and then we'll connect to the engine one and then we'll come back i'm not sure if it does it when it's cold because when i drove it yesterday um after doing the service it seemed all right um, but when I was um, messing around with the old stereo yesterday uh, and I started the engine, it started doing it. So, yeah, not happy about that. Um, as I say, I have ordered a coil pack and leads, 19.99 from eBay, uh, which is uh, pretty good. Um, but yeah, let's. Um, yeah, I'll be back in a sec. I'm just going to uh, get it connected to the engine ECU. Okay, something I have discovered um, is that someone has obviously put a new speedo in this. And the mileage is reading 81,876, whereas the car has actually done 78,998. So 
the car's actually done less than the speedo says so obviously on using multi-use scan as you know you can't go down uh, you can only go up so someone's bought one that's close to it um, which happens to be um, 3,000 miles more than the car's actually done uh, so I am going to adjust that back down to what it should be um, I might as well mightn't I um, the only problem with that is of course when it comes to the next MOT um, and of course the current MOT is going to show a difference in the mileage um, that's the only thing but yeah 78998 it would be daft of me not to put that back to that wouldn't it really um, and of course what I'll do is I'll explain to the buyer and say this is at a new speedo and the mileage of the car is actually less than it was displayed so I've adjusted the, the, the mileage back down um, I can't see it being a problem um, yeah see the car there's no errors I've just done a test on the errors the car it's only very slightly it's not very much but you can feel it shaking a little bit and I think as the longer it goes on the worse it gets it doesn't run you know it's no not doesn't rough run at all it's it's fine rough running uh, it's fine rough run it's fine running and I've revved now and it's all it's okay and then a few seconds later it comes back again so I'm hoping it's the coil pack about no errors um, again this doesn't really mean anything to me any of these figures um, vehicle speed obviously it's going to show zero engine speed 700 so you can see it moving there the engine speed so it's, it is moving around a little bit the needle is not moving well very very minuscule amount but as you can see it's changing um, engine temperature air temperature what is the temperature outside 13 degrees um, oil temperature 30 degrees spark advance see these spark advance and all these mean nothing to me absolutely nothing to me at all but we've not got any errors coming up on cylinders that's the funny thing coil let's have a look at the coil charge time see if they're all similar so what you're really looking for is a I guess is something that's completely different but they're all about the same 2.0 something and they're changing which I assume they do Knock sensor, that's another thing it could be, of course. It's a trouble, there's so many things. Zero voltage. Now, should that be zero voltage? Dunno. No idea. See, I did all this on Loopy Harold, looking at all these values, and they didn't mean anything to me then either. <laughs> Intake pressure. 4.8 psi, is that good? I don't know means nothing I mean some of you who are mechanics may may something might throw up to your eyes that you can see that something's not right but I don't know what I'm looking at so it's all very well looking at these if it doesn't mean anything to you if the values it's not going to be the because that would come out of an error if it was uh, one of the lambda sensors. Cam position, zero degrees. Desired cam position, minus two, that's interesting. <sighs> Could it be something to do with um, a um, relearn done after the cam belt was done? See, normally those those issues go when you're travelling at speed, switch the ignition off and then they come back. Until you do a reset. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Engine start up allowed, universal code, blah, 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 fuel consumption, 0 0.6 litres an hour. Yeah, it don't mean anything to me. Um, so I think what we're gonna we're gonna have to change the coil pack. I think at least try that. Um, so I'll put I'll put the one I got it on the box over there, just inside the garage. I'm gonna I'm gonna change that, and we'll see what happens. Because I can't I can't sell it like this. I've got to get it sorted one way or the other. Um, I only ordered the other coil pack yesterday, so at some point. Um, 
that will come in the next few days I suppose and we can try it if this one doesn't work right I've just put didn't bother filming it but I've just put on that one that I had lying around I've put that one in um, I, I, I was going to keep the same leads um, but I decided to change the leads oh god I tried, decided to change the leads as well so this is the uh, the one I've taken off obviously it looks exactly the same but as I say I just had a notification from eBay it's been dispatched actually so it's it'll probably be here by the weekend so hopefully it, it, it always it, it won't certainly won't hurt to um to have a spare one but i'm hoping although i did have a sticker on this that said maybe duff and i can't remember which car it was that i changed it i remember some comments where i'd only put two bolts in them one person piped up and said that um he's got three bolts for a reason and i can't it wasn't it was last year sometime but i can't remember why i changed it and i can't remember what car it was if i if i could remember i'd look back at that video and see um from from the only thing i can think of is maybe i changed the plugs on there and the coil pack at the same time which fixed the problem and i thought well, i don't actually know whether i fixed it with the with the plugs or the coil pack that might be the reason why that would make sense but unless i could find that video if one of you remembers which one that was please let me know <laughs> i'll have a look back but so we're going to try it now i'm actually going to start it i haven't got the air box um bolted down but oh i've disconnected the battery sorry about the camera work just got to reconnect the battery would help wouldn't it won't get very far without that connected we put the electrical connection back on as well which i nearly forgot about oh i really wanted to get this car finished today and let's disconnect the stereo so that doesn't come on don't need that to be coming on all right Give it a go, shall we? You know what? Is that better? No, it's still doing it. If anything, it's a bit worse. Hmm. No, it's definitely still doing it, so that hasn't made a blind bit of difference. Oh, what a nuisance. So I think I'm going to bolt that air box back. So I just, I might as well leave that one in, I suppose. It's exactly the same. But as I say, we don't know. We don't know whether this one is any good anyway. <clears throat> so I think what I'll do, I'm at work at the weekend, so I think I'm going to, I'm going to bolt all this back in um, and then I'm going to use this for work at the weekend um, and see if it improves you know just taking it on a bit of a run nuisance that's really a nuisance disappointed about that i really hope that was going to work right we have uh finished apart from this uh very slightly rough island let's say it isn't that bad but i want to get it done unless it improves um, enough for it to be okay um, I'm not sure if it does it when it's warm when it's cold both not sure whether it increases or decreases I don't know don't know um, put new number plates on front and back I always do that as you know um, I've got to black the tires up but we'll do that next week um, so the only thing apart from this um, idling problem the only thing we've got left to do is get the tracking done which I was going to get done today but I think I'm going to leave it till next week because I'm not going to be able to change that um, um, coil pack until it comes, probably, which probably won't be until the weekend. Um, so there's no point. I've got, I've got other things to do. I've actually got to do some work on the BMW because it's MOT is due this month. It's first MOT. Um, and I've still got those, uh, those warning lights on. Uh, so I've got to change those hinge things. Um, so I'm going to leave it for now. Um, so we'll come back on this next week. Uh, and this will, this will obviously be in time for for Sundays because this Sunday's video is is um, the previous the previous day so this is this is day two as you know um, so hopefully come next week uh, we'll be done finished hopefully so I'll see you next week okay three days has passed uh, weekend has been and gone um, and it's now Monday morning again received that the weekend uh, that's the new 
coil pack. Now, it is very, very, very slight, this, um, uh, I keep wanting to say hunting, but it's not hunting, it's just that rough tick over. It is really, really slight. Um, so I'm hoping this is gonna do it. Uh, it might not. Um, yeah, I don't know, it, it, it is so slight that I'm sort of tempted to not, as much as I wanna make the cars as perfect as possible, um, I'm tempted not to do anything about it because it is so slight. It, someone else might not even notice it. I can notice it. Um, so I don't know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge as and when. So we need to try this. So the car is actually out on the road at the moment. Um, I've got to take it for tracking today, um, get that done. Again, that is only slight. Uh, it's, it's about five, it's about, if that's, if that's where it should be, it's sort of there. It's not even at one o'clock, but it is out. And of course, that's probably what caused that uneven tire wear. So we're going to take it and get that done. I pay forty pound for that. Uh, that is not my car. Someone in the part in the, on a previous video when that was in the background asked whether that was my new project. That is my cleaner's car. It's always here up until about midday every Monday. Um, but sorry, not my cleaner's car. I don't have a cleaner. Cleaner's car. Start again. That is not my cleaner. That is my next door neighbour's cleaner. I don't have a cleaner. Um, so yeah, that's, if you see that in the background, every Monday morning that, that car is there. Um, so as you can see behind it, out on the road, I'm, so I'm gonna do it out there just so I don't need to mess around getting my neighbor's cleaner to move her car. Um, so I'm gonna put this in. Uh, I've, I've, I also, I changed the bulb in the um, heater panel. Uh, I noticed when I used the car for work yesterday uh, and I noticed that it was um, out again. And also, when I, when I was going to work yesterday morning, um, I, I was at traffic lights behind a black van uh, and saw my headlights reflecting out from the, um, in the back of the van and noticed that the driver's side headlight isn't working. Now, there's no lights up on the dash, strangely, which I would have expected there to be, so I need to change that as well. Uh, so we're gonna do that, I probably won't film that because I'm out on the road. Um, so we'll come back afterwards and let you know. We'll take it for tracking and then we'll let you know the result on it. So I will see you a bit later. Right, if you remember, um, we need to adjust the speedo because the car has done 79,017 miles, but the speedo reached 81,895. So we need to adjust it. So I've got my X tool over there. Uh, I'm gonna plug that in and we're gonna do that. Right, so I've got the X tool Pro 2 booted up. Now, I c if I wanna go up in mileage, I can use multi ECU scan um, because I am going down in mileage here. So the car, has done, I took, took a picture of it in multi ECU scan, 79,017. But the speedo, uh, as I've already shown you, is 81,895. So with this bit of kit, I mean, I mean, there's no doubt this does other things as well. Now, when you, if you buy one of these, out the box, unless they've updated it since I bought mine, out the box, it doesn't work on a Fiat 500, it comes up with an error. Um, I have reviewed this and show you it working. Um, so if you click on the link above, that will take you to the review I did on this bit of kit. Um, also, I will put the link to it at the end of this video as well. Um, so what you do to adjust it, let me just get my phone in front of me so I know what my figures are that I'm looking for. Now, as you, as you know, when you adjust these, they don't always go exact. So I'm gonna do it as be the best I can and then I might have to go up and down with it a little bit. So we go, it's not touch screen. <laughs> so we go down to dashboard, okay. Europe, okay. And we come down to, sorry, I'm not even pointing at the screen. Fiat, I'm trying to point at the screen and see the buttons at the same time. 500, uh, it does do the TFT as well. I also, I have an updater to make it do um, the TFT. Uh, I haven't tried it on the TFT, uh, but people I've sent it to have messaged me back and uh, told me it worked. So um, if you get one of these and it doesn't work on your 500, uh, drop me an email, paul at love500.co.uk and ask me to send you the updaters. I will send you the updater that makes it work on the 500 and on the TFT one for the 500. So we just want to go into 500. We want to do it in miles. And it tells us what the mileage is, 81873. So it's actually 81895, isn't it? So 738393, it's 22 miles higher. So if I do it 22 miles lower than what it should be, which is 79,017. So if we just do it 79,000, 78,000, what did we say, 23. So if we do change mileage, okay. Please input the mileage. So we want to go 
Um, um, what do we want to do? We want to do 78,000. I'm not sure if we're supposed to do noughts here. I think we are. 78, yeah, I think we need to do a nought here. In the past, I've left it as a blank and it don't work. So we have, oh, hang on. Oh yeah, nought. So we want to make it 78,000. Seventy-eight thousand nine hundred. Uh, so it's seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. So six. So that's nine hundred ninety-four, isn't it? Maths wasn't never never was my strong strong point. And I'm doing it on camera. I'm under I'm under stress. Right, seventy-eight nine nine four should hopefully make that go to seventy-nine thousand and seventeen. You press OK. Seventy-nine thousand and fourteen. There it is. It bleeps a little bit for a while. Oh, it's fourteen. Oh, it's three miles out. That'll do. <laughs> Adjustment complete. It'll stop bleeping after a little while. There you go. It'll keep going. Turn that back off unplug it out of the ODB port and we should not have any fleshy mileage and we should be reading the right mileage 79,014 miles it's only because we've got the door open yeah when it decides let's shut the door there you go 79,014 so it's quite a bit lower than it than it was showing now as I said as I said on the video yesterday um, that will be lower than the current MOT so if it was, if I was MOT in it now, because it was only MOT um, month before last, if I was MOT in that now, that would come up as a discrepancy on the DVLA. Now, hopefully, whoever buys this from me is going to do more than more than that three thousand miles um, between now and next January. Uh, then it won't flag up. But I, when they buy it, I will say to them, I will explain to them what I've done. Um, so it obviously shows the mileage shows less than the last MOT. Um, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, I could have left it as it was, but why would I leave a why would I leave a car over eighty thousand miles when it's actually done less than eighty thousand miles? It's that psychological thing as well, isn't it? Seventy nine thousand rather than eighty. What was it? Eighty three thousand. I've forgotten what it was now. But yeah, it just seems daft, doesn't it? Uh, so that's that done. Um, I have got now. So the um, I keep wanting to call it hunting. The miss. The not missing. The uneven uh, tick over, lumpy tick over, that's the phrase I was looking for, is still there a little bit. It is re it's it just so tiny. Uh, and I'm because I'm selling this car quick and cheap, I'm not going to mess around anymore. If they, uh, if they notice it, which I don't, they, they probably won't, um, I'll give them options. I'll say, you know, I may have to put the price of the car up potentially. Um, if you want to take it as that, see how you get on with it. If you don't like it, I'll get Glenn, uh, Glenn the mechanic, to come and have a look and see what he can do with it, if anything. Um, or uh, the other thing was, what was the other thing? Um, oh, there's tracking. I went down to get the tracking done. And um, it is only a tiny, tiny bit out again, which, you know, I wanted to get done. Um, they've gone. I used to use Tire Pros. Um, they're all closed up. There's a skip outside. All the signs are in the the chairs are lying in the car park, closed down, um, which is a shame because I used to get that for forty quid for cash doing it there. So um, there's nowhere nearby that I could have got to quickly enough to get it done without having to book it. So again, what I'm going to say to them, like you know, if if they if they say oh well, the, the steering's out a little bit, I say look, if you want to take it like that, get it done. I'll give you the money. Um, obviously that will, or, or I can, you know, fit it in when I can to go and uh, book it in and get it done. Um, I suppose there's certain places I could just take it to, probably quick fit, in, in fact, even. Um, but yeah, so all, to all intents and purposes, I've got to oil the hinge on the door and it's done. It's clean, smells nice. Yeah, it's done. Mileage is now adjusted. Let's turn that ignition off. Uh, we've got the funky stereo and so on. So the car's done. So I will be taking some photos of it now, whilst it's not raining, and I will um, get it up for sale this evening. 
Uh, so I haven't got a buyer in mind for this because uh, no one really knows I've got this one and it's gonna, I'm going to offer it on the mum's group that I normally do because it's a nice, cheap runabout car. Uh, which is in good condition you know it's a, it's not it's not one of the ones that i've sold off cheap because it's a bit ropey this is not a ropey car this is a really nice previous cat end it's got that lovely stereo carper ride stereo in it um decent mileage ish um no air con unfortunately because it's a pop but it's in good nick it is in good nick it's full service i've got to track actually i've got to track the service history down still um i haven't done that yet i still need to do that i've got some of it of course um so it's had new wipers, it's had new plugs, it's had uh, oil filters, um, it's had a new tyre, well, say new tyre, I put a new wheel with a decent tyre on it, didn't I? Um, it's all good to go and it's MOT'd until next January, so I'm going to put it up for two and a half grand, which is an absolute bargain, I think, an absolute bargain for a lovely little runabout, which is at least a £1,000 more, uh, sorry, at least a £1,000 less than I sell most of the others for. Uh, so that's it. Uh, so that's the end of this project, Project Ernie. Um, wasn't a massive amount to do on it, um, but we've done it. Uh, it was another BCA car, wasn't it? So it was another quick one, really. Um, I don't know the other projects I've got. I've got two other projects on the go. Uh, I don't know in the timeline whether you've seen those or not at the moment, so I won't talk about those. But uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Um, don't forget the Carper Ride. If you want to look at the Carper Ride, there is... Um, go back in the earlier on in the video um, or if you want to look at the other one um, which I've forgotten the serial number of the pro one which is the bigger screen um, I have done a review on that one so um, yeah as always thank you for watching if you're not a subscriber please click on the button subscribe to the channel give us a thumbs up uh, we're we, I was gonna say we're approaching 10,000 we're a long way off but we're about 9,200 and something so we're nine and a quarter thousand or thereabouts so hit that magic thousand uh, magic ten thousand mark that'll be amazing within the next couple of months so um yeah thanks for watching as always take care stay safe and we'll see you soon